Hello, everyone. My name is George Orchies. I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Scythe. I want to welcome you to another Threat Thursday. This Threat Thursday, we're going to look at Conti. Conti is known as the king of ransomware or the current king of ransomware. If you take a look over here from Dark Tracer, excellent uh, threat intel to follow on Twitter. This was posted on May 14th. Who is the current king of ransomware on the dark web? And we see there with the most amount of victims is Conti. Now, because of the FBI alert that came out last week, we know that they've actually hit over 400 different organizations, including healthcare and first responders and even 911 dispatchers. So Conti is currently the king of ransomware. I do want to point out, which I believe is total coincidence, that the other large ransomware gangs that we've covered in Threat Thursday, like Maze and Gregor and Darkseid, have all shut down recently. Now, that could be because of the sharing of cyber threat intelligence to understand those adversary behaviors, the release of these adversary emulation plans for organizations to test themselves and be able to detect and respond to these threats before they cause an impact in your organization. So as usual, we're going to head over to our Community Threats GitHub. This is the largest library of publicly available adversary emulation plans, and they're all free. I have pulled up Conti right here so you can take a look. And I do want to give a shout out to the DEFER report. The DEFER report is an excellent resource of cyber threat intelligence and incident response because they share actual TTPs, the procedures that we need to build out these plans. Now, the DEFER report is free, but I encourage you to sponsor them as we do here at Scythe because it is a great resource and if you use it, you should definitely sponsor them. So if we take a quick look here at the Defer Reports uh, Conti ransomware post, we learn quite a bit of this threat actor. And it's broken out in their timeline, as well as how they did initial access, which we can see down here is with run DLL32, how they perform discovery, which actual commands. So every threat Thursday, we go through these and we create these adversary emulation plans. So you can download our adversary emulation plan from GitHub, it's a JSON file, and you can set that up in your Scythe instance. Now, we also release um, the attack navigator view of this. So right on our GitHub, there's Conti attack navigator, and we can import it into attack navigator so you can see a MITRE attack mapping of everything that this ransomware gang does. So let's show how to run this over here on site. We're gonna create a new campaign. We're gonna give it a name, in this case, Conti2. This is a Windows-based uh, attack. It's HTTPS. And from our community threats, as well as from the CTI, we can see that the heartbeat and the jitter is set to 62 seconds and 39% uh, percent respectively. So we can input that right here. Where did we get that information? From our cyber threat intelligence. It's very important to leverage CTI for adversary emulation. So 62 seconds means that every 62 seconds, the endpoint that this executes on is gonna call out, but it's also gonna have a jitter, a percentage of deviation of 39 seconds. We also have a PDB path that we can copy and paste here. The PDB is the program database path. So we can actually grab that same exact path and put that down here in our Scythe payload. Because we're creating a brand new payload, we have full write access over the PDB and the timestamp. We then head over to the automation steps. 
So we've already created this for you. All you have to do is choose existing threats, select Conti and add the steps. We see the steps right up here. It starts with discovery. It's gonna load the run module, run IP config, sys info, who am I? Everything that we found on that defer report. Now, Conti does run on systems that have and are on a domain. So we can run echo user domain to determine if the system you're running on is indeed on a domain. Because if it's not on a domain, it doesn't make sense to run all of these other commands. If it is on a domain, we're gonna run NL test, net view, net view all, net groups, et cetera. The next step is persistence. So Conti does persistence by creating new users, enabling remote desktop protocol, and creating a new service. But to do that, you must have local admin privileges. So on step 16, we're gonna check if we have local admin privileges, because if we don't, it doesn't make sense to execute this, right? If we do, we will create the user and what was observed by the defer report, this NU user with this password. We then add that user to the local admin group. We run a registry key and modify a registry key to enable remote desktop protocol. And we're going to create a service called Conti in this case. We then get over to actually doing the double extortion. The way we do that here at Scythe, and of course, you can modify this in your execution, but we're going to create a new directory called con. We're going to create 101 megabyte files. That is our preparation. We then run PowerShell to compress everything that's in that desktop folder. We then exfiltrate it using RC2, our command and control. So anyone looking on the network will see this data leaving their network. We then perform the actual encryption and deleting the original files. We then download a ransom note. We execute that ransom note. We open it up with notepad. And then of course we clean up. We highly encourage everyone to run this in their production environment because that's where you have your people, your process and your technology. We want to test the realism. That's why we do adversary emulation. So if we're testing in production, we want to leave the systems how we found them. So we're going to clean up after ourselves. We're going to remove that directory we created, the ransom note, the exfil file. And if we were running with admin, we're going to set the registry key back. We're going to remove the local admin uh, user. We're going to delete the user, delete the service. And towards the end, we are going to run Mimikatz because that was seen in this case. Now, I like running Mimikatz towards the end because if it does get caught, our next step is to shut down anyway. We then launch our campaign and we can see a number of campaigns are already running. So for Conti, we actually need to execute it with run DLL 32. So you can grab a direct download link for that run DLL 32 could be a 32-bit DLL or a 64-bit DLL. You can also download, download it straight onto your system as DLL, and we can execute it. Now, this execution takes a bit, right? 62 seconds. So I've already ran this. I ran this twice, one with admin privileges and one without admin privileges, so we can see step-by-step step what occurs. Once we are done executing this, we get a number of reports. One of them is this MITRE attack heat map that shows us what was possible and what was not possible. In red, we see everything that was possible. We weren't running on a domain system, so defense evasion for a domain account doesn't show. However, we see all these MITRE attack techniques and we can click on them as well. We also have a view of Conti that we can import into our vector instance. Here we can see it executed with run DLL 32, created services, created users, did defense evasion, ran mimic cats, did discovery, performed lateral movement with RDP and user shares, uh, used PowerShell for compression and collection, exfiltrated data through the C2, and of course, that big impact, right? Deleting the local user, deleting data, encrypting data, et cetera. 
So we have all of this available for you on our Community Threats GitHub. Uh, you can download this in a variety of ways from a attack navigator JSON to the heat map image that I just showed to the JSON of the adversary emulation plan and as well the visualization that I just showed you uh, through one of our integrations. So that is Conti. Um, we hope that you can use this, improve your detection and your response because we all operate under assumed breach nowadays. We know we are going to get compromised. We need to be able to detect and respond quickly. This should allow you to train your team, test your process, get that time to detect and time to investigate and time to remediate down, and then of course, respond quickly so that you're not affected by the current king of ransomware. We hope you enjoyed this Thread Thursday. There is a blog post that goes with this as well. And please stay safe out there. Have a wonderful day.